Hello, everyone. I'm the Red Dog. Bark, bark. Watch the Three Count Podcast. Bark. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. And uh, let's be real, okay? So, like, the team said they were going to be here, and they aren't. And once again, like I said, when you work for free 99 and hot dogs and handshakes and you run out of hot dogs and there's COVID and you can't do handshakes, nobody wants to come to work. It is what it is. It is what it is. But this is the Three Count Podcast now entering the ring, which means one thing. We have a special guest for you. This man can be found at Warriors of Wrestling. He is an incredible talent. He's just had an amazing match, which we were just talking about before this uh this went live so give it up for my man here abraham khan hi uh so it's my first time on the on the three count and i, I was just talking uh, to our glorious host and he really is a really cool guy uh he really made me feel welcome i appreciate that and uh i honestly i i, I didn't know how much wrestling tenure you had but you got a really good personality i just wanted to say that right off the bat that you're very inviting and you're and you seem like you could cut like a like a pretty fun promo because just the way you hot dog handshake free 99 i was like boom 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 i was like oh i kind of like this guy hopefully you're a baby face i just, I just want to uh, <laughs> so that's that was cool yeah, yeah we'll peel back the curtain a little bit yeah um so i i i you know i'm in my first year of like training and stuff and so like i've told and i've you know i think this is probably like this 15th 16th episode i've told this on but yeah i mean my first year and then like you know i i really wanted to study the game because that's one thing i take pride in myself is that i am a student of the game i watch a lot of wrestling i take a lot of notes i take down uh, like i'm still building like a move set together but i love getting other people on and getting advice and learning from them and so like having the opportunity to like interview you was such a unique opportunity because we have a few mutual friends <laughs> and uh so i was like yeah let's Let's do this. And then, um, yeah, man, like you said, it's I right now I'm a baby face, but my character is kind of like a mercenary. So like I don't I don't worry about whether I'm the good guy or the bad guy. I just I like taking out big targets. So that's what I do. And uh, so when I cut promos, yeah, it's it depends on the person. It depends on how I'm feeling for it. Uh, I had one promo I did uh, on a friend of mine. Um, I won't put his name out, but. He's a, he's like this evil pastor. And uh, yeah, I felt like the promo went so well, like the way it cut it, this deep kind of like ruthless sounding. And my friends like, don't do promos in the dark. I was like, this is the point. Like I'm a mercenary. <laughs> I'm getting people out. I was like, I've done them like in the, in like out in the light. And so that people can see like who I'm coming. And it's, I know it's fun, man. I just, I love being able to talk and like, I don't know. It's something I've been told recently is that public speaking is not a problem for me. I have no fear of like whether I'm on well, camera. Or off we make it a podcast, like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> we just met like a half an hour ago, and we're like talking like we knew each other forever. Like at least at least that's what I felt like. You know. Oh, and, I I tell everybody, man. I treat everybody the same way, and the way I treat everybody is that, um, like you said, this is the first time we met, but I don't ever talk to people like they're a stranger. I talk to people like I just haven't seen them in a while. And uh, I feel like that's just a great way to do in life, man. It's just, and Joe, and mind you, like, we didn't talk about this, but I'm 35 years old, dude. Like, I was in the military for six years, and, like, I got out, and, like, I got lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I graduated. Like, you know, I did a lot of stuff, but I was, like, wrestling has always been a passion. And when you're passionate about something and you love something, like, you're going to treat people like you want to be treated. And I want to be treated Absolutely. like I have respect for everybody. So that's what it is. I, I feel like first of all, you 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 look like a like a kid. So I just want you to know that. I have no idea. You told me you were like twenty three. I was like, yeah, makes sense. You look about twenty three. Um, so you have good genetics. Uh, uh, but I feel like sometimes, and maybe it's different. I believe you're like you're based in uh, Maryland. I'm I'm in New York. Um, people that lack life experience, and me again, this is me assuming based because your military background. People that lack like life experience have a hard time with complicated emotions, complicated subjects and situations. Cause you don't always have to react with, to the, with the first thing that comes to mind. 
and you want to have composure. You don't want to overreact either. You don't want to come across very emotional. So you being with your life experience, again, based on the things you just told me, I'm sure if you were younger going into it, it would be easier to break you, you know, because wrestling is not easy. It's not easy. It's not like, oh, we're jumping on a tempur mattress or something. It's not, all right? It's not. It's, I don't know who made that illusion of, but, you know, it's not like jumping around in your mom's bed when she's not home, wrestling your cousins or your siblings, all right? It's, it's tough. You know, your body hurts. And when you're starting out, you do a lot of it for free. And you have to really love it to keep doing it. You know, and, and uh, like, feel free to agree or disagree, but I, I feel like oh. you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, I definitely agree with what you're saying. Like, and, and mind you, like, it's, it's how I treat conversations too. Like, if you and I were to talk on the phone and we were chilling, like, just out, like, and I was just driving around, the conversation, this, the way this conversation flows is the same exact way. So, like, I, um, yeah, so I agree with you 100%. And I think it, I think what it is, and then it's funny because, like, you, you mentioned it with, like, my character wise, right? Is that, like, one of my friends would always tell me like, oh, dude, no, I need you to cut the promo with like more piss and vinegar and like anger because like someone just cost you your payday. I was like, that's not how I am though. And like people, and, and the thing is, is what I really appreciate and I've, I've started to realize and, and understand better is that people will connect with you better if, if you're genuine on who you are versus like, you know, like, yeah, I'm portraying a character and my character is like me cranked up to a hundred but at the end of the day, it's still me. Like I'm still the same person, whether you're I'm on the clock, off the clock, in a podcast, out eating at a restaurant. Like I'm the same dude. Like you can come through and just like talk to me and I'll legitimately have a conversation with you about whatever. We can talk about comics or movies, music. But when it comes down to like cutting like cutting a wrestling character, it's like my friends will be like, do it like this. And then I'll do it that way just for them, just so that they'll hear it. But at the end of the day, like, I'm going to go back and do the way I want to do it because my character is going to be, like, I, I imagine my character being, like, face from um, the A-team. So, like, just, like, really kind of prick. Or, like, a great, a great better example. Imagine, like, Deadpool, like, Ryan Reynolds' character from, like, X-Men Origins where it's like, all right, there's a lot of dead people in here. Like, that's how I imagine myself as, like, a mercenary kind of character and, like, my friend's like, no, dude, you got, like, you're mad about the pay. I'm like, no, 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 no. Fuck the money. This is what it is. Fuck the money. I 100% just see me being like this, like, yeah, I can be upset that, like, I didn't get the job done. But do I really stay pissed off or do I live, learn, and then go out and get the job done the second time? Well, yeah. And, and that, that's, that's you making it more real, you know? And even that, that's one of the benefits of having, like, a reality-based uh, persona in my opinion uh like like for me for example i'm really high energy right like uh, uh, i come out there i think we live in a in an era where everybody wants to be the rough and tough bad guy but they really just they don't want to be a bad guy they want to get cheered for it and i i feel like that's no one we don't watch movies right like i'll, I'll use marvel for example you, you go into a movie right and it's like um i don't know uh, off the top of my head uh ant-man Right, you go when you watch Ant Man. You've seen Ant Man, if yeah. not, like a different Marvel. Okay, yeah, so no, no. Ant Man, and the villain of the first one was with Yellow Jacket. Yep. And Yellow Jacket doesn't try to be like, "Hey, wink, wink, I'm the bad guy," you know, and try to overshadow Ant Man. He's the villain. He plays his role, and we boo him, and we don't want to see him win, right? And he does like dastardly things throughout the film that remind you that I don't like him, you know, and it makes you, in contrast, like. Ant Man, Scott Lang, whatever, even more. Right. You know, maybe it's a bit. I didn't want to use Iron Man because it's done to death. I didn't want to use Captain America is a great example. You know, uh, any of his villains, but he, he's he's a little bit deeper, a little bit too, more metaphorical. But um, <laughs> but but you get what I'm saying. Like Captain America, like to me, and they did a great job, by the way, with reestablishing heroes. Uh, like I remember growing up, or like if at the beginning of this whole MCU thing, I think we all would have. Uh, like, oh, Captain America's a square. And, like, by the end of it, you're like, this guy's the man, you know? And it's, like, an ideal you want to strive toward. So I feel like the art of, the, of, of being a good guy, right, in wrestling is – people, like, it's hard, dude. It's freaking hard. It's, it's hard to get people to love you. Like, you, somebody looks at you wrong on the bus, you're not going to like them, you know? <laughs> yeah. But to get people to really, like, get behind you to the point where they don't want to see you get beat up, that's hard. Because it's, it's a very fine line. Oh, this guy's a wimp. 
You know, it's a very fine line. Oh, F this guy, you know. Well, the other guy does like dashly things and it makes you laugh because, you know, there's no stakes. Sometimes you just have a bad, a guy that's really bad at being a good guy. And, right. And, or they don't want to play the role. So they're already like having like this confirmation bias in their mind and they don't want to do it. So they're not going to do the best of their ability. Or so, sometimes you have a guy who is supposed to be the face and like he just, he doesn't do anything to like draw interest from the crowd. So the crowd doesn't really get behind him because they don't, you know, you, it's, it's something that we talk about too in training and you, you probably hear it all the time, right? It's like, we're not cheering you or we're not, we're, we're not booing him, but you're not giving us anything to cheer for. Right. Yes. And that's like, and, and you're right. Like when you get to thinking of like, and I, it's funny cause we can bring it up. Like Dr. Strange was that same reason for me too. Like I love Dr. Strange, the movie, but the problem was, is I didn't really get behind Benedict Cumberbatch as Dr. Strange. Like, yes, he's a good guy. We're supposed to cheer for him, whatever. But at the end of the day, I was like, Mm, I'm just not with it. Like I'm just not. I felt like he looked the part. That's what like I liked the he most. He did. He did. He really did. Oh, and the best thing. funny, funny thing is, I watched him in uh, the second Star Trek movie, and I text my buddy, who I actually do another podcast with called Nerds at Round Table. It's all about comic books and comics. So mm-hmm. I text him, and I was like, I was like, Yo, I want Benedict Cumberbatch to be Doctor Doct- Strange. And sure enough, two months later, it was confirmed that he was Doctor Strange. So I was like, yeah. Oh, this is crazy. But when I saw him, I was like. I don't believe you as far as you being like, like, I don't, I don't want to cheer for the bad guy, but I can't cheer for you because you're not giving me anything to cheer for. Unlike black Panther, which, you know, Killmonger said some shit that I was like, I genuinely agree with you in what you're saying, (laughs) but I know you're the bad guy and I just don't want to like you, but you're saying some things. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I like it. (laughs) He, he said some things and then, and some of the more jaded people in my life, my personal life, would like agree with it until he was like, he's just going to go back and just kill a bunch of people. And I was like, well, that's wrong. <laughs> so you can't just go walking around because, you know, you put too much power in people's hands. And this is just getting like too deep. But like, <laughs> then you, like, you're basically playing God. And then in, in like this limited interaction, I get to decide if you live or die, you know? So it's like, no, nah, I think Tatal is right. You know, even though Michael B. Jordan is like so charismatic and he did an awesome job, he's a great actor, but uh, I'm a guy that's like, it, well, T'Challa has to have a point, and he did. Mm-hmm. You know? And and um, and in the end, he still tried to do right right by everybody, you know, because he did have some good ideas. So, you know, you try to create that charity foundation. I think at the end of the yeah. Black Panther movie. So again, it was it was cool. It, it was a cool it was a cool idea. But it goes back uh, to like faces and heels, right? Is that like. Like, and, and we were talking about this beforehand, right? Is that like the job of like a face is that you're intending to get the crowd to get behind you. And how do you do that? You like read the crowd, you understand the crowd and you play to the crowd, right? And as a heel, like you want to take that away from people, right? And what ends up happening is that um, sometimes you get this face that's not that good and you get this heel that's like super dominant and the crowd ends up start cheering for the heel and like, you take everything away from the baby face, but then not only that, you take everything from the baby face, you take everything from the heel too. So like, then what do you do? Do you turn the heel face and make him like, you know, have people cheering behind him? Or do you try to plant another person in there and try to get the crowd to re-hate that guy? Well, but you've already killed, you've already killed like the momentum that that heel had going in because you had a bad baby face. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you can also bring that to Marvel. You can also, but I, I, I'll do both really quickly. Um, well, it depends on if there's a story or if there's just um, like this one-off match. In the situation of a one-off match, I think it just doesn't matter. Just as like it goes to show you, like this guy just wasn't ready to face this guy, and that's why the crowd turned on him. You know, uh, and then sometimes you'll have a movie like uh, Thor, and everybody's talking about Loki, and they're not talking about Chris Hemsworth enough. Right, but then you put him in a situation where like he's across from Iron Man and like no Loki's a heel, you know. You put yeah. him in the first Avengers, so I think both. But uh, as far as like making it, if you're on like shows week, if if they, if you're on like a Raw or SmackDown or NXT and the crowd's just not booing you, um, then they got. I I again, I don't even like talking about that stuff because I'm not in that position. But it would make sense to turn the guy, you know. Uh, but then, then you turn, and then, and then the crowd turns on him because well, we like bad guys. It's like, yeah, we like the bad guy because bad guys are cool. That's why we like people like we like people like Randy Orton because he's a bad guy, but he's just cool the way he is. Or like the Fiend, it's like a perfect example. Like the Fiend is a bad dude. He's a heel, and like people cheer him because he's just 
he's just cool. Let's be real. Like, he's cool and we like him. But he's a bad dude. <laughs> if he was a real person, and I said He snapped Finn Balor's neck yeah. on SummerSlam, and people were like, that's awesome. And we were like, why are we cheering this man? <laughs> yeah, you're one of the – like, you know, like, I imagine, like, a mob of people, and, like, somebody gets a, grows a conscious – like conscience and um yeah. while being in the mob like why are we throwing rocks you know like why are we throwing rocks at somebody <laughs> and uh that's it's it's weird it, it's weird because like you have to look at it like if it's real right and if it's right. real it's like we wouldn't like this person no. it's like people like people hate superman for some reason right but if superman existed <laughs> people would treat him like jesus you know um uh, because you know everything about him uh but yeah like i guess to, to come to bring it all full circle it's hard being a good guy and I don't feel like being a baby face in today's world is appreciated enough. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like that uh, at all. Uh, I, I do try to bring a lot of realism into it. I, I, when I come out, I have a t-shirt that says never let the world win because that's always been like a personal thing for me. And I used to say that to some of my friends going through tough times, even myself uh, when I was younger, cause I had a lot of crappy jobs. Uh, when I was like 18, my dad had a heart attack. And I try to do college and work at the same time because I'm the oldest. And then when the um, college just, I couldn't maintain both. So it was like roof over my head or college. And so I did roof over my head and I had a couple of jobs. I got really fat. I was really, really fat. I was like, at my heavy, I was like 245 maybe. I'm like down to like 180 now. But they, I, I trust me, if you ever see like old stuff of me, you'd be like, I don't look like the same person. Um, and, you know, you can't let, shitty things that happen to you change you because then then they win you know um after like 9 11 like i got the crap beat out of me in third grade in the bathroom by some guys you know and i even said in one of my promos once it just kind of came out the situation kind of called for it but i was like you know you could just write everybody off you know you know yeah he was like a jewish white kid but that doesn't make everybody bad right you know you can't because you get, I learned a long time ago, maybe it's the way my father is or, or what my father was. Um, you have to treat everybody on their individual merits, you know? And that's what like never let the world win meant to me. So I made it part of my whole thing when I came out. And that means like never taking shortcuts. And, and you know, it means a, a, a plethora of things, but that's what in the forefront of what it means. It's like, you just, you just got to be you and you're going to shine through. You're going to break through. You know, you see guys like me, you expect like the Iron Sheik's boots and a turban and stuff or or somebody pretending to be like Muhammad Hassan who's like actually like Italian. Yeah. You know, he's not even really, you know, and I I set out a long time ago. I was like, I'm not going to be that. I mean, at the time when I originally set out, Mustafa Ali didn't exist. Jinder Mahal was, and Jinder Mahal was actually at Warriors before. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Uh, I wasn't there yet, but, um, you know, and he had stopped wrestling and, so I was like, you know, I'm going to be that guy. And I was going to pave the way because when I grew up, I saw the rock on TV. I didn't know what the rock was, but I saw his complexion. I saw my complexion as a kid. And I, like, the rock was God to me. I was like, I want to be that. And you know, you, you get older and I mean, you, then you find out, Oh, what's a Samoan, <laughs> you know, an alpha Z kind of thing. You become a bigger fan. But uh, I wanted to be the first, you know? And so when I set out, never let the world win. It's like, you're you can i'm not gonna fall into this stereotype i'm not gonna fall into this little bracket like this is how this is what you're allowed to be you can't get out of this i was like now i'm gonna break through that and i'm gonna show you who i am and and that's me agreeing with everything that you said because you a mercenary you're gonna do it your way because you're you right and you're gonna be first you know so uh it's funny. I, it comes to agreeing with everything you're saying. Yeah, I love I love the fact that, that that's the way you want it to be. Like, you know, never let the world win. It makes sense. It's funny because like me tattooed, I have uh, my life, my line. Uh, it, li it literally got handed down to me from my dad, who um, he used to tell me all the whole time. Like, I mean, he's still around. Like, I don't want to sound like he's in the past, but my dad said it to me all the time. He was just like, look, man, it's your life. Walk your line. Like, just be you. Literally, I realized that he got it from a Johnny Cash song, which I'm okay with because I love Johnny Cash. I love Johnny, I love Johnny Cash. Cash. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, so that's where he got it, and I got it tattooed on me, and uh, it's on my triceps. But I always, I always make sure people know, like I'm, I'm walking my own path. Like I don't, I don't care where it goes. I don't care how. It, I know where the end goal is going to be. Um, I may start here, and I may end over there. 
or up here or just down, but just know I'm going forward and I'm going to walk through people. And that's what I'm going to do. And I just, I don't, I care about everybody, but I genuinely like at the end of the day, I want it to be what people know, like, man, like Cliff, he, he started in this little town in Nebraska that you can't find on a map. Like, and now he's here wrestling in some of the big places and wrestling some big names. And he said he was going to do it. And here I am, like still trying to do it. Like, Awesome. And mind you, I graduated in 03 and I'm like, I'm still on this path. I know I've gone all over the place. I know where I've been. I was like, I'm just keep looking towards the future and keep looking to bigger and brighter things. So it is what it is. So I'm glad you said that. Would you say like, this is just because uh, in my life, it, it is this way. When you're busy, right? Or you're doing things or you're working on yourself. It's harder to get caught up in the nonsense, bullshit, drama, things that don't matter you know it, it it's like it's harder for that stuff to matter to you because you got other things going on when you have actual things going on you don't get involved in like petty things that because it's just a waste of time yeah you know um when i was younger i kind of i didn't understand that like I, I i i used to think like i had to take everything head on and I, as i got older i was like you're just wasting your time <laughs> you know uh and the busier you and, and i like i like i didn't know that you came from a small town in nebraska you can't even find it on the map that's crazy that's yeah, crazy legit is this place called baird nebraska i love the town um mm-hmm. i graduated a class of 39 kids like and i and to be fair i ranked 35 of the 39 <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's crazy because like um i i was one of those kids and i'll be i'll be i'll be frank like this will be the first time i started talking about this on the, on the podcast i was one of those kids that i was like the goody goody kid but i was always like the outcast for some reason like i just i didn't i didn't drink i didn't smoke i like i thought i was doing all the right stuff like by doing it but for some reason all the kids that were doing all the stuff that was like against the rules like they were like being a little bit more successful than i was and i was like i don't i don't like this i was like maybe i should and i i've thought about it i thought about it at times in high school i was like maybe i should cave maybe i should be one of those kids that like i want to start drinking and smoking too because like that's what all the cool kids are doing and they're like doing big things we have a kid that i told this story yesterday to a bunch of friends actually my best friend who graduated he was a state champion in wrestling um wow you know and he was one of those dudes and you know, I, I I'm not going to put his name out there, but then I had a, uh, another kid that uh, he broke the high school record to most points scored. And by all means, they're doing great things. Like, I don't want to disregard what they're doing, right? Because they're teachers and they're, they're shaping the future of our generations. And I 100% respect everybody who does that, who's doing that. But I was like, I have, I was like, I have a path, man. I got things that I want to do. I got places I want to be. Yep. I was like, it's, I'm it's, gonna... it's good for them, but it might not be good for you. Right. And I was like, and I, and eventually, and I, I, everybody tells me, they're like, well, we see you as a teacher. I'm like, okay, cool. When I'm done living life, I'm going to go into that field. And I don't want to sound like, cause I 100% appreciate teachers. I just, I want to, I want to be experienced. When I walk into a classroom, I want kids to be like, well, what have you done? I'm like, well, I lived in Hawaii for five years. I've been in Iraq. I've gone to, uh, I've been in the Horn of Africa. I've gone through Germany and I've been in Italy. I've been in Maryland. I've lived in Massachusetts. I live in Florida. I've lived in Panama City, Panama. Like I've been around the world. Like I'm still stuck in Hawaii for five years. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's like that. I don't think I've ever met anybody that did that. That's pretty cool. How was that? I, if you don't mind me asking. It's like in a short oh, burst. It's, oh, I love it. I, I miss the islands every day. I talk about it. If for those who know that I'm on TikTok and they follow me on TikTok, I talk about it all the time. Um, I would make it seem like if you if you if you were to ask me about it like off offline, I would make it seem like I left yesterday. That's yeah. how that's how much I miss the islands. I give nothing but love, nothing but aloha to all of the islands in Hawaii. I just cannot wait to get back um, and just go kick it in Kailua because that's like my favorite spot in the entire I on all the islands on Oahu. Kailua has this one restaurant. I'm gonna talk about it. This is you're the only person to bring this out of me. Um, there's a place called Boots and Kimos. I'm much love, much uh, to my Ohana over there because they have bat, banana mac, banana pancakes with macadamia nut sauce. It is the most divine thing in the entire world. It's like eating a dessert for breakfast, and then you get an omelet on top of that. It is like it is the greatest thing in the entire world. I'm and I like down real quick. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Boots and Kimos. And mind you, when you walk in. 
it's all NFL themed. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And is what it, made it what made it so much more home to me, right, was the owner of Boots and Chemos is a Broncos fan, and that's my favorite NFL team. So like I just felt at home instantly when I walk in and you see like pictures of, like John Elway and Pat Bolin, and then like <laughs> there's all these famous Broncos like all over the wall and the autographs, and I was like, oh my god, like this is this is the great place to me. <laughs> That's pretty. I, I'm surprised you're a Broncos fan. I mean, you're because you moved around so much. But it, whatever, it's cool. You know, everybody is entitled to their own it's team. Tattooed. It's tattooed right there. Wow! Holy crap! Yeah. I got tattooed. Underneath? If you don't mind me got... asking, there was something else underneath. Oh yes. Yeah, so, um. So the tiger underneath it is actually my high school. So I do want to represent my. I do represent my high school. I am proud of. I'm proud of growing, growing up um, in Bear, Nebraska. I don't. I don't talk about it a lot, but I very much like. It's like one of the greatest places that like I grew up in. Um. And what makes it so what makes it so unique was um, my mom is from Panama, so Panama City, Panama. She's legit Panamanian, and I'm a Panamanian. And my you know me and my sister. You're um, the whitest skin Panamanian person I've ever met. I get told that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but going to kick it with my friends in Nebraska and my my friends in Baird. Um, actually, I just lost my best friend um, of 22 years. 20 yeah, 22 years. Uh, he passed away uh, January. Oh, I'm sorry, not January, um, August, this last August. And um, yeah, my best friend, like we, we were able to relate because he's Mexican, I'm Panamanian, and like we just we hung out all the time. And I met his little brother who actually is the host of Nerds at Roundtable. And we just sat back and kicked it. And we just had so much fun, like just through life. And we'd be speaking Spanish to each other, you know, and just, it's just, it's just the way we worked. And like, all right, man. I just so I grew up in this huge community of like total Latinos, so we just had so much fun, and like, but I was on the other side too, right? So like, I was an athlete, and like, I, I was a football wrestler, track star, like I did all the things that like you're supposed to do in high school, and mm-hmm. like I did band and choir, but I always oh. talked about wanting to be a pro wrestler, <laughs> so like. That's freaking cool, dude. That's yeah. uh, that's really cool. Like, it, like you're like out of a movie. <laughs> this is like the most revealing like I've ever been on the podcast. Because normally when I talk to people, it's about them, and I don't want the podcast to seem like it's about me. I just want to put that out there. Like, like look, I, I I I like getting to know individuals, especially if they they seem like decent people. Otherwise, I just talk and get out of the way. But you you seem like a like a, a very genuine person. Well, um, it's funny you were asking because like the nickname, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because you know behind the scenes again for people who don't know my name is uh my first name is clifford so like clifford, right. clifford okay dog. Yeah. Dog. okay so yeah. like in elementary school like kids made fun of me all the time all the time man like that's all i ever heard about it's like oh come here boy <laughs> come here boy oh yeah clifford here's a book about you for halloween i used to get so mad bro like and i'm sure you can relate to something like this right i used to get so mad like i'd be in tears i'd be so oh, mad yeah. and through and through junior high, like I got a little bit better, not much. High school, I got a lot better because I was like, whatever. And in my sophomore year, um, I changed my name. I, I, I let my name be, right? So I was like, all right, well, if you're going to keep calling me that, y'all going to know who I am. So R E D D O G G, I started, right? And then um, I was like, well, I need to find a, a cooler way to write this name out. And I started paying attention to Georgia, right? Georgia, Bull, Georgia Bulldogs. And the whole thing was like, go dogs. D-A-W-G. So I changed it. I changed it to D-A-W-G. And from my junior year to li- literally now, it's been that way. And it's gone through so many iterations, like different parts. I wrote poetry. I like, I flow. I hit, I was on a mic. I have like CDs out with some friends. Um, I hope no one finds them because they're <laughs> bad. Uh, in the military, that was my call sign. Like in high school or college, people knew me by that name. Like, and so it just like this whole name has gone through so many iterations and so many different life experiences, which has been able to help with my character and the way I perceive myself. And you know, and I'm sure you've gone through your own personal journeys too. Like, oh, yeah. how you have to travel through life. Uh, yeah, I, I my mind were like a lot of like financial struggles and and questioning why I was going through the things I was going through. Uh, that that was what a lot of my trials and tribulations where everything else kind of just rolled off my back. I didn't worry about things too much about, um, I didn't really ever, I didn't not fit in, but I didn't fit in. I was really shy, uh, growing up. And then when I got older, something in high school just snapped, uh, like or not snapped, clicked in my brain. And I remember like, some guy that used to walk in, became one of my buddies. 
Um, his name was Lewis. Uh, hopefully, ever, I don't know if he ever hears this, but uh, he used to walk in with like, a big WWE championship. And then, like, one day, he just, like, started, like, I saw him, like, drop kick somebody. I was like, oh, that's cool. And we started talking about wrestling. And we just, like, like wrestling around on campus. Everybody knew me as, like, the wrestling kid. You know, I was taking, like, these crazy bumps on concrete. And, again, back then, they wouldn't let you in to wrestling school, you know. Right. So that's why I was doing all that stuff. And then I met a lot of some of the closest friends, like, to this day that I still have. Uh, like my friend James and my, and my, and my cousin Mo, uh, he's half Italian and he, he's just like been my best friend my whole life. And he really stuck with me with about, uh, uh, he stuck with me, he pushed me to constantly chase my dream. You know, I used to be, just be so afraid of telling my father when, uh, when I was younger and, you know, he wanted me, he wanted me to have like one of those jobs, like an accountant or something. Cause I was good at math and, uh, or I'm good at math and then, he wanted me to do something that was bankable. You know, it's like wrestling, it could work out, it could not work out. And, but I had such a passion for it. Uh, and I don't think my father could understand it. Uh, as the years went on, he finally did. But uh, for a long time, I struggled because I couldn't pay for wrestling school. And th- when, until, I, until I came to Warriors, which is honestly, it was thanks to my girl. And she's also, she's also Puerto Rican and Italian. But my, my girl, she, I remember I had a talk with her. And she pushed me. She's like, you know, if this is what you want to do, then you got to do it. And I did. And I, and I pursued it. And um, I remember I called the school and they didn't pick up on me. And then they called me again. They called again. I called again. And I had all my gear. I was like, I finally got all my ducks in a row. I had money. Because I, I spent so long trying to keep a roof over my family's head. I put all my dreams and aspirations in the back burner. And when I finally, I, I got a nice job. I got a nine to five and I was doing my thing. I felt very empty. You know, I had, I had a, I have a beautiful girlfriend. I love her. You know, we live, we live together now. And if I didn't have her, you know, all I did, all I would do, do was work, you know? So she learned, I had learned to be a little bit selfish and it was okay to be selfish. I, that's something I learned from her. I credit her for, um, but not to veer off too much. She called the wrestling school and then they happened to pick up and she's like, Hey, are you guys open today? And the guy's like, yeah. And now he's my buddy. His name's Joe, Joe Bellini. He, um, he's, he's a great guy. He, he gets a, he gets a bad rep You know, people, people will dismiss him and, and they'll give him crap. And I, I, I want to be the first one to say on record, you know, I'm not Caucasian. I'm not anything. And he's never done anything racist toward me, he's given me nothing but opportunity. And I've turned up and, and, and he looks for guys to earn it. He's a good, good guy. He's a really straightforward guy. Maybe that rubs people the wrong way. And I, I don't, I don't really care what other people say about him. I always gave him a fair, he gave me a fair chance, gave me a fair shake as soon as I walked into this place. And I've always done the same thing with him. He's a very nice, he's the most approachable guy I've ever met in the wrestling business. Because when I was younger, again, like I said, they didn't have opportunities when you're under 18. So I did commentary. I did the, uh, the announcing stuff. And, you know, I, I've been to places where they took your money and you got beat up. You took a bunch of guys' moves and they sent you home. You know, and this guy, and, and just take, they take your money. You know, one of my buddies, he, he, bring, he brings up a story all the time about how he paid this dude. You know, he came, he paid his dues for wrestling, and the guy bought Chinese food with it. And he was just standing in the ring the whole time. You know, like, okay, what do I, what do, I get to do? You know? So it, it, wrestling wasn't easy, and I don't like complaining. So I, I'm not going to bring all that stuff up. But I, I do want to thank Joe for being an honest guy, being whatever anybody wants to think about him, he, or, or say about him. He's never given me that. He's never show, act like a quote unquote racist. He never acted like a, uh, like whatever I am has a, has a role to play with my talent, you know? And, and I, I feel like if we had a couple more guys like him uh, in the wrestling game, we would have, uh, I think wrestling would be better. I think wrestling would be better if we had more guys like him uh, promoting stuff and, and scouting for talent. Cause he's a good human being and he, he and Dave, people have tried to run his name through the mud for a long time. And uh, I want to be the first one to say, like, no, nah, he's not that bad. He's actually not bad at all. He's, he's, he's a good human being. Um, they have a lot. If, if it's okay with you, I just wanted to shout out a couple of guys that really helped me under their wing. Um, when, Isaiah Wolf, the American gangster, he really helped us out, uh, helps all the students out, constantly coming up with moves, teaching them sequences. Um, a guy that really, even though I don't agree with everything he does, he was somebody that took his time. He took like a day out of his week where and Wednesdays, his name is Justin Adams. And he really gave me 
um, the time and attention that I needed with the things that I was worried about and, and helped, helped with a lot of confidence building, helped with a lot of the small things and, and building confidence. Um, I really, really appreciated the, the, the atmosphere at Warriors of Wrestling. And I really think it's an, un, it's, it's not underrated because it's, it's a really good school, but I don't feel like they get enough credit for how good their program is and, and how well they teach up and coming guys that want to be wrestlers. And if you take it seriously, if you take it very seriously, you'll be rewarded for your hard work. He's always looking for opportunity. You know, if you, if you're looking for opportunity, if you're looking for a chance at this and you take it very seriously, you will be rewarded. And I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. I just, I felt like I butchered it the first time. <laughs> um, oh, good. But uh, I, I do recommend it, you know, cause I've been other places and there's nothing else like, like warriors. The ring is great. The, the guys are good and it's a, they have a plethora of different type of guys to learn from. And, the, and they bring in a bunch of guys like in the span of a month, I sat with D'Lo Brown, Thunder Rosa. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't mention some of the other names because they weren't supposed to be there, but, uh, <laughs> but they were like, you know, that it was real. Like Thunder Rosa like slammed me down to the ground and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I got in the ring with Darius Carter, who I was just telling you about. We, I, I um, fell into a situation where I, I had no more contendership for the um, the No Limits Championship, No Limits World Title, because it was defended in Europe uh, by Vinny Pacifico. Oh, Vinny Pacifico! I, I got to thank him too because he's just he he did an a, he had his AEW debut recently. He's um he's somebody that's really uh he's really he took liking to me because they put us in a match together, and he's just a really nice guy. He's a really really cool guy, and he you can tell he loves wrestling, and I and uh, his passion speaks volumes. And it's infectious, you know, and he's, he's worked for ring of honor and he's, he's done a lot of stuff. And he's got, he, get, he actually helped me get, uh, an opportunity when the promoter asked him if he, uh, about, about if he knew anyone, uh, I think that's how it, how, how it happened. And I ended up having my first match in Maine a couple of, like a month ago, not even a month ago. And, uh, if you go on my Instagram, it's on Ab- Abraham underscore con pro, you can see, I made like a two minute, like documentary of my whole Thing. My, I took out my girlfriend, obviously, because she helped me drive, and she's like <laughs> with me all the time. She sticks with me. She's like my freaking rock. Um, but it, it was really cool, like, because I, I like to keep the, the world separate. I, too many people started like following her, and I was like, nah, this is weird. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> she, she's not in it, but she's there. She was there the whole time. I promise you, she was there the whole time. She was like putting away chairs and stuff. You know, she 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 earns her she earns her place. Um, I'm sorry, I know I, I I'm talking a lot, but I just really want the people that have done right by me um, and made this journey easier for me. Uh, I just wanted to thank them because they're really good to me, especially when they didn't have to be, you know? It's funny you mentioned a certain individual, right? Because uh, I'm friends with Marcus and Tyree and Isaiah and the oh. boys of prolific. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know you them. Tyree. Yeah. Yeah. Tyree. <laughs> We've actually had them on the podcast, man. There was such a great interview and actually they're, uh, so we're recording this on December 7th. I think their interview comes out tomorrow, if I remember right. I was really? like, I said all the dates. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So I love those guys, man. Oh, yeah. Tyree. I And and it's funny because like um, the way it ended up working out was like all like we we have a big team for the three count podcast. But Chaz and myself are like the two, the top two, two dudes. Like we just we run the whole entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um but even Chaz and I were talking about, man, like we could take something from every single one of the guys, but you know, Chaz vibes with Marcus because he likes Marcus's swag. I like Isaiah because Isaiah has like all this crazy knowledge and he just seems like he's got like this older kind of statue. But we both like Tyree because Tyree obviously is, you know, he's a wig splitter. Let's be real. He's a fun dude. So we we took something from everybody and we we genuinely like and it's funny you talk about like guys that you put over because like prolific is definitely one of those teams where we were just like man this is a great conversation and we had so much fun like a two-hour podcast we didn't even expect it to be we were like shooting for maybe 40 minutes two plus hours later we were still talking to him like yo this is amazing (laughs) prolific is dope uh tyree taylor uh on my debut match in my hometown was literally my hometown like like i live right there right and it was it was uh saint finn bars i think it was that was the venue come out and there were people that obviously I, I invited but there were people that i grew up with that i didn't know were wrestling fans and they were there so i got like i got like a nice pop uh and i'm having like a three minute match and i knew i was like I got, i'm three minutes in 
and Tyree Taylor comes out and like instantly people like people that didn't know him were like whoa and the people that did know him were like Tyree Tyree comes in and the, you know the whole thing is like he beats the crap out of these two students me being one of them my, my buddy James being the other and there's this really cool picture and I'll, I'll send it to you after this but it's like he's like his move is Uranagi, which is like a rock bottom basically yeah. right and I go up and the, ca- the camera guy uh catches my face and I'm just like dude Tyree Taylor is like the real deal he's he's awesome he's he's awesome and I, I'm personally I'm a big fan of Marcus Marquito as well he's just he's just cool <laughs> he's just cool always got shades on <laughs> he always got his shades on yes he yeah. did the podcast with the shades on really oh in okay. a dim lit rest in a dim lit room <laughs> next time I see him I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a, I'm gonna give him a uh, yo. he, he's he's a cool cool guy he's just he's just cool that's the best way to describe him um, yeah just, and that's cool. and that was cool and like they came on the show they gave a whole bunch of great knowledge you know yeah. they all had great uh great things so something i was gonna ask you too man like um you know because like everybody's like an up-and-coming you know, people who are gonna listen to this are people who are like up-and-coming wrestlers maybe people who've been in the business for a few years just kind of interested in what's being said but yeah man like for you like what like all right two questions that have come off of this right so who has given you your best piece of advice? And then what advice would you give to other wrestlers? Um, people that are starting out. Yeah. Um, the best piece of advice I ever got um, starting out was how to not take yourself too seriously. This is, it, It's a two piece thing. It's two different people. One of them was not take yourself too seriously. Don't be a mark, you know, because you're playing a role at the end of the day. And you can never beat the pencil. Uh, whatever's written, that more than anything is what's going to happen. And if if you don't want to do it, well, that's fine. Somebody else will. And that's true. That's true. The other thing was to stick to your fundamentals. Because let's say you get signed off of a really good match, and but they don't want that character. Well, do you? What else can you do? If you're only good at if you're a one trick pony, which is not a bad thing, not a bad thing, you know. Uh, you can you can make an argument that if so and so wasn't this, then he wouldn't be on TV, okay? But they were lucky, you know. Things the stars lined up. But you should you, if you don't have a strong base, like you, you're not good at your rolls, you're not good at your bumps, you're not good at safely implementing basic maneuvers, reading body language. Then, if you're just you're just that one thing, and if you don't get to be that thing, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to get exposed. And for me, I don't have. I'm not in a position in my life where I can waste my time. I have to be good at this. That's what I want. Um, so my advice is take, take your training and your basics very seriously. They might sound stupid. They might sound dumb. Oh, I did my roles. No, because that's what saves you. I got hit by a car um, like four years ago. Uh, and some guy hit me and I was, just, I was just walking. Some guy, he came up one way street and he hit me. And I rolled on that guy's hood. It was a white car. It was like hoopty or something. I don't know anything about cars back then, but I, I rolled, I, I rolled on it, and then the guy stopped, and I like I slid and I fell on my face. My face was messed up, but the the rest of my body was 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 fine because I was able, you know. So it's an extreme example. I doubt people are gonna run over, but but my, my my point is that your fundamentals will always keep will, will always make sure that you have a job or an opportunity, you know, yeah. Because then you know, let, let's say you wrestle somebody that doesn't want to take your big move. Right? What are you gonna do? He's a vet, right? Like they put you against some name or some guy that's established, and you're taking. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't want it. He doesn't feel like it. Nah, brother, I'm not taking this uh, Canadian destroyer tonight. My next film will sniff, you know. And then like, what are you gonna do? You gotta have something, right? So that, that's my advice. That's just me. Uh, I like I like Bret Hart. I like I like old school wrestlers. That's that's my thing. I have a Bret Hart action figure that I never opened. It's hanging in my room, right next to a Captain America fighting Bret Hart comic book. <laughs> so you know i don't know i don't know if that was like a good response but that's really in my heart what i feel it's what i would say to anybody is yeah i was gonna ask if that's what you're willing to say to anybody then it's great advice like yeah and i always tell and it's something i joke about too like my friends are like um my trainer one day and it's, it's so weird because we're talking about like different life like different points of life right but like one of my friends uh and he's my trainer as well um but he was like um he goes man why don't you just like low-key have some fun i was like man in order to have fun you have to have good fundamentals and like yeah. it's true you know what i mean and like you said you know like i like and i'll be honest there was a time where i didn't know how to take a certain move and i just didn't know how to do it and like 
you know, how do you do, how do you learn? Well, okay, well, you're going to experiment. And I spiked myself and like, I did it badly. In fact, like my shoulder and my neck were parallel to each other, like on the ground. And, um, I rolled through it like, and like I got up and I laid on the ground for a quick minute. Cause my buddy like jumped on me, gave me a hug. He's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I didn't jump. And he was just like, yeah. I was like, was I supposed to jump? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, bet. Let's do it again. And before he could even say, are you sure? I was already hitting the ropes coming back and he didn't have a choice. He had to like lay out and catch me because <laughs> I was like, it's already too late and we're that'll, going through with this. <laughs> that'll be enthusiasm, bro. That, that, that'll get you really like, me personally, I love people's enthusiasm for this, you know, because you can tell how much they love it. And just you know, based on our conversation, it seems like you really love it, you know. So it'll get you far. Keep that, you know. That's awesome. I, that to to have the enthusiasm like that. Number one, thank God you didn't get hurt. All right, but, yeah. uh, but, but that, that's really cool that your work ethic. You know, you got up like now. Let's do it again because you wanted to do it. That's awesome. You know, because again, it's one of those weird things in the world where it's like nobody's going to thank you unless you do really, really well, right? So you have to kind of just be your own support system. You just have to. You have to, your heart is what's going to get you to the dance. So if you really love it, you'll get there. You know? well, and the other part too, and it's funny because like, and I, I ended up getting hurt like, um, so I think that happened like, I think like May, June. And I'm getting hurt like two weeks before I was going to make my, my live debut I was supposed to be in West Virginia. I got hurt like a week and a half before. And what happened was, and we talk about basic fundamentals, right? I did a roll. I was doing a three quarter roll and I didn't do it right. And it felt off, but I couldn't, like when I did it initially, I couldn't figure out what happened, right? So I did the roll. I got up. I was like, all right, well, I was like, something didn't feel right. And I looked at my friend and I was like, what was wrong? He's like, I don't know. So I did it again. And what ended up happening was because I did a three quarter roll, I went right elbow, left knee. And it crunched in, it actually tore the lower, my part of my lower ab. And so like eight weeks, I was on the sidelines, like just being pissed because I couldn't get in the ring. I couldn't roll. I could like, what sucked was I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't lay down. I couldn't like walk properly. Like I was in a lot of pain. So every week I was back up at training, like taking notes and talking about spots and mad learning. Prop, mad props, like, but mad props. Like, I, in the history of me trying to become a professional wrestler, I, like one other guy in my life ever did that. This guy's name's Max Bain. He's one of the students at Warriors. He got his, he broke, he got, I think he fractured his collarbone. He did the same thing. He came in and he watched. I give you mad props for that. Cause it, it sucks. Cause number one, you're in pain. Number two, like you just mentioned all those things you can't do and you can't go and do the thing that you want to do, but you, you came. That's mad props. Matt, I, I was, I, I, that's I got you, hurt on it. I got hurt on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. I was back up Sunday, the next day. You were back? Yeah, I was, I was in pain, but I was back up the next day. My, my daughter was with me. Like we just came up the next day. We sat, I sat in a chair. I just took notes, ran through and like legit, I still have all, obviously I still have all the notes cause I have it in my journal, but yeah, I, I, I went through it all, man. And, um, it, and what was crazy is like all the kids were all doing their roles and stuff. And I low key, like I saw a kid get ready to do a roll wrong. And I stopped the whole drill. Mind you, mind you, I'm still in my first year. And I probably shouldn't have been doing it because, you know, like the trainer's going to correct everything. But nothing was being said. So I low-key told him, I was like, yo, stop doing it this way. Right arm, right elbow, or right leg, right arm. Left arm, left leg. That's how we're doing lucha rolls. Like, do one properly. Otherwise, you'll end up like me. And you'll be on the sideline for X amount of weeks. So every time that we were doing, I was harping it and harping it and harping it. And um, these kids, like, they came back and they're like, dude, we're so glad you said something because we didn't know if we were doing it right or not. And to have someone come through and yell at us and tell us, like, hey, do it right, mm -hmm. it, was, it was beneficial. Because what happened with me was I was learning how to do a, a, a Tennessee slash Memphis spot, like, you know, people call it either one. But um, I wasn't doing it right. And – we had a guest trainer, former WWE wrestler, superstar, and I took I kept getting up wrong. Mm -hmm. And instead of having me stop <laughs> and like talk to me, he just kept making me run through the spot. And I probably in a matter of twenty minutes, I probably took like forty bumps. And it's all because I wasn't getting up left over right. 
Like I was just getting, I was popping back up. Mm. And uh, he was like, no, left over right, left over right. We'd run a spot, go left over right. I miss up like on a, like a, a back body drop. I would do a back body drop, hit the ground, left over right. And like, so he kept harping on me. So now like we go and take bumps, these kids pop back up. I'm like, hey, go do it again. I'm like, why? I did, they're like, I didn't, well, the trainer said I did it right. I was like, but you didn't. I was like, do it again, left over right. And they're like, oh. And like, I catch flack because I'm vocal about it. But if one person is going to take that much time to talk to me and have me bump that many times, I'm going to save your bump card. Because something I've learned as an adult, well, as a teen going to be an adult was like, foolish men learn from their mistakes while wise men learn from the mistakes of others. So I can save you from doing the stuff that I was doing wrong. I'm going to save you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my father used to say that to me all the time. Yep. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, experience is a difficult teacher, my father used to say to me, you know, and I'm, uh, if you can learn from my experience, you know, you'll save yourself the, some heartache. So, uh, again, some people have to learn the hard way. That's fine. Everybody's different. But uh, <laughs> that's cool that you're doing that, you know, that you're taking the time with these guys. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to ask uh, something. I, I, I completely skipped my mind because you, you were saying something and it caught my attention. Um, you, when you make mistakes with the, with the, with the left or right, it's, it's okay to make mistakes. And especially when like a big name is there, it's like, it's like, even though it's not a tryout for WWE or any, any company you've got, anybody wants to be in. It feels like it. And it's like, oh my God. This is like everything I do counts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially when you're not used to it. It's like, oh my God, that's the end of the world. You know, it's just, it's just, it's like, I don't know. That's just something that I wanted to ask if you felt that way too. Oh yeah, all the time. Like it was funny is like every, I've, I've interviewed two, three, four, like six different people who've been attached to either like AEW or WWE. And I find myself getting nervous just like doing the interviews, right? But then like when I'm performing in front of people and like, mind you, one of them, uh, he was on AEW Dark, he wrestled Wardlow um, and Mr. Grimm, like an amazing dude, amazing talent. And he's very he's passionate about the business. The body bag guy, right? Yeah. And he's very passionate about, about the business. And so like when I'm training with him, like I, I will fuck up, right? And I whatever i'm cursing on the show anyway i don't care it's my show anyway so i'll fuck up and like the one thing he'll be he was like hey man do it again and this time when you do it do it this way right and uh and then i'll go and i'll do it the way he told me to because like one thing and not and then i'll do it right after that because one thing I, I take pride in myself in is that one i'm genuine and two i'm coachable like you're gonna teach it to me i'm gonna learn it and then i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing it and if i go off like i know you'll correct me back and i'll, I'll go back to doing it right but it's, it's the things I take pride in. And it was something that, you know, he's also told me, he's like, dude, he's like, I like working you or working with you because you're coachable. And um, it's just, it's funny, man, to think about like life and how like it'll, it'll get you there. But every time I meet him, I'm like, and I've met him, I don't know, eight, nine times. I'm nervous every time I meet him. Yeah, yeah. Grim, Grim, he, he kept the way he carries himself. It's like, I, I was like, wow, I'm shocked he said that because it's like, any interaction I've had, and he probably won't even remember me, but I, I again, I was very new at the time, but I, I remember I looked at him and I was like, this guy doesn't look like a friendly person, but it's cool that he is, you know. Uh, I heard he was from like some some of the other guys that worked and like, oh, he's, he's a cool guy. But I was, as I remember looking at him, I was like, this guy, the, like he looks with the name like Mr. Grimm. Um, he looks, uh, he looked really, really scared. Well, uh, it's, like, it's like the guys are prolific too, right? Is that um, we were working a show, right? And I'm, was sitting right next to him. I didn't talk to him because I was nervous because like here's these these big dudes who've been in the business for a while and I didn't talk to him prior to the first four hours that we were there. Because like I just, I didn't know how to approach them. I didn't know what to talk to him about. But Chaz was working a tag team match with him. And uh, we won't reveal, we won't, no spoilers, we won't reveal who, what happened. But anyway, we, um after like the show, like we all get to talking and kicking back and, um, they're like, hey, <laughs> Tyree was like, hey, how's your back feel? Because I was working Darius Carter. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about that before. Yeah, Darius Carter. I was like, 
and people who people who know they know right so i was laughing i was like i feel all right they're like don't worry brother we've all been there and then we all talked about it and um it was like a great moment that i had with those guys and the interactions and then it, this is what really got me kind of thrown off they're all like so this was like your fourth match ever and i was like yeah 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 and then they're like and you got to work him i was like yeah and they're like okay that's awesome they're like how long have you been training? And I get—I don't know where the mix-up in the conversation happened, but I was like, yo, since January. And um, Tyree was like, oh, 2019. He's like, man, you've been doing doing really well for someone who's been training that long. I was like, no, 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 2020. And he was like. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just kind of stopped. They're like, what? I was like, yeah. I was like, since 2020, man, like. I started in January, COVID happened. I got stopped from March till late May. And then from like late May all the way till now, like I've literally been in a ring all the way up until the point where I got injured. And then I missed eight weeks. And when I got, when I was cleared to go, I had just been cleared a week before to be able to get back in a ring. And so I had two, I had a match in front of a live crowd for the first time in West Virginia. And then the next day I was in DC with uh, Darius. That's, and that's crazy because his initials are DC. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Darius Carter, yeah, we were talking about it before. You know, I, I had the privilege, uh, the absolute privilege and the honor of getting to get in the ring with him. And like you said, yeah, if, if you know, you know, he's the real deal. There's nothing about that guy that's, um, that would ever, you would ever look at him and be like, that's phony. He, the way he carries himself, the way he, his, his psychology of what he brings uh, in a match, what he brings to the ring, he is on and he is on you would never be able to tell like that this guy is like a very, a very, very kind person. And oh, he, there's he, a reason why they call him the richest prize in wrestling. Like, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> that, I'm glad very that. Much. And it's cool that we, we, we now me being a couple of days removed from having um, a one-on-one -on -one match with him uh, on short notice. Uh, I mean, that's a dream scenario for anybody at Warriors of Wrestling to be at them in the main event against Darius Carter for the championship. That's, I guarantee you, everybody wants that spot. And I was uh, fortunate enough to, um, to be in that position. And I, when I worked him, oh my God, like that guy is, he makes you want to be a better wrestler. You oh, look yeah. at him and you're just like, he, the way he is, it's like, you want to be good enough to face him. And you're always, be like, there's very few guys. I remember watching a, a, an, an interview um, I think it was John Cena or, Sh or Shawn Michaels, one of them, but it, it was about Shawn Michaels. And he was like, when you get in the ring with him, he makes you a better wrestler. And that's how I felt about Darius Carter. The few interactions that I've had with him, I've sparred with him a little bit. Um, and I felt more confident coming out of it. And then I got in the ring with him and I felt like my concept of what a match needs to be changed. And yeah. he's incredible. Uh, and, and, and I just want to give him all the props in the world. He's a champ. He's a champ. He's a champ no matter where he goes. He's the man. He's absolutely the man i gotta see because i know in here um just looking really quick in my book i have a i we were talking about uh, about the match and stuff like that and um yeah he uh he just like kept handing me stuff to like talk about and to work with and to work on so and i did i wrote everything down and i came back to him and i was like hey man like these are things like eventually like i'm still working to book him on the show like i he's like one of my must-haves but um yeah we were talking about the, the match everything like here's like pros and cons of like i don't know if you guys can see that but there's pros and cons of like the match and like there's tjp right here oh this one i don't know hey i see it i see it yeah but TJ like gave us critiques on the match. And then, you know, Darius came to me with like a bunch of advice, like things I needed like to work on. And it, it was so cool, man. And like, you're right, man. It, one thing I definitely love doing and love is getting critiques back about everything. Um, and I take them all in stride because people are just like, you know, and everybody's like, be cautious of like who you take advice from and, and they're right, genuinely. But you can take something from like everybody who's something. Yes, yes. You. I agree. I, I agree. Uh, somebody for me specifically, uh, not, not, I can't say for every student uh, in at warriors, this guy, Chris Steeler, he's the man. <laughs> um, he's, he really uh, takes his time with, I can't, again, I can't speak for everybody, but I know he took his time with me and he gives 
time and attention to the right guys. And he really is looking out. You know, he specifically tries to work with all the younger guys to make them better. That's He doesn't have to do that. You know what I mean? He, Chris Steeler, if you watch, go back and you watch anything in Warriors of Wrestling, he's trying to you – know, sorry, he's not trying to. He was, he was working all the names. He was working all the guys that came in, the big names. And, and here he is trying to help all these new guys. And uh, I don't know if you guys have that where you are, but um, we are ex- extremely fortunate. And as far as critiques go, we'll have matches. Sometimes they get recorded or we'll record it or we'll record promos and we'll send them in to like to Joe who runs it or, or his right-hand man, Sal, and uh, they'll give us feedback. And if it's good enough, you'll see it on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or it disappears into the black hole of somebody's inbox. But regardless, you know, but, but if it's a match, they'll break it down and they'll tell you, they'll tell you if it sucked, you know, and, but they'll explain it to you too. You know, it's like, this is why this was bad. And um, again, that's why I can't say enough good things about the warrior training center, but uh, they're doing some things over there and I like the way they run their stuff. And you seem like somebody that always wants to be better. So if you ever, if you're ever in New York area, I definitely recommend you stopping by. You know, oh, once, once COVID's over and all that other stuff, but if you oh, ever, there's, there's no doubt, there's no doubt, man. Like I, you know, going into my, my, my first, well, it would be my first official year will be January like 4th with my first, my, my one year anniversary. And, uh, I told, I told my trainer, I was like, yo, dude, like you'll see me here mm-hmm. sometimes. I was like, but if I'm not here, I know where I'm going to be. I was like, I'll be everywhere you'll follow me on instagram or on instagram or on tiktok wherever because that's pretty much where i'm going to be mainly but you'll follow me you'll see exactly where i'll be at and it'll be like oh okay cool like that's where he's learning now this is where he's going to be at so yeah i that's totally cool. intend on to expanding my horizons man gotta do that <laughs> well, you travel the world you know so it makes sense for you to do that because because it just kind of fits if you if, if somebody knew you your whole life it would just make sense to them. Hawaii, you said Germany, I believe, you know, um, you lived in, I don't know how many other States, uh, you're from freaking Nebraska, you know, and far as I know, you're not living there right now. So nope. again, <laughs> so again, that's, that, that's pretty cool. You know, you're, you're going to be a journeyman and that's, that's pretty gangster. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you if, if it was okay, to, but the thing is the conversation going so well, but, uh, I like to, cause tomorrow I gotta, I gotta hit training and I, I do nice. have to, I do like to uh, hit the gym beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was okay, the thing is, I, I don't know if we could ever do this again. I would love to do it again. Cause you, again, you're great. Uh, Cliff. Uh, and you gotta, I don't know if you know, but it, uh, this is just like a side thing, but the name Cliff is pretty cool. So, uh, I watched the show. It was on, it was on um, HBO max. What was it called? It was one of the DC shows. I don't know if you like DC, maybe just a Marvel guy, but, um, but uh, there was a show. It's it was on it was on the DC app. I forgot what yeah, it was called. So it's called Doom Patrol. Oh, it's called Doom yes, Patrol. my man, bro. You're the man. You're the man for that. You're the man. That's yes. So I think it's in both Cliff Booth or, or is it Cliff something? It's Cliff Steel. Cliff yeah, Cliff Steel. I don't know where Cliff Booth came from. I think that's a movie or something. But Cliff Steel, bro. Yeah. Robotic. So when you said Cliff, I was like, I clicked on my brain. I was like, oh, I'm a massive yo. I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nerd, bro. Like that's what I do. I would like, like to talk to you. Uh, off air or i'm definitely going to get your instagram at the end of this but uh just so i could talk back and forth if you have twitter or anything um just to geek out because i need somebody to talk to about these things you know <laughs> I, 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 I do know my girlfriend but she doesn't like trailers and spoilers because she's like they give away too much i'm like oh, right I can't talk to her anymore about it <laughs> so well uh, I'll, I'll share the story with you and then we'll hop into the 10 count questions and then we'll wrap up from there so um I love the Mandalorian, right? I'm a huge, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not even a huge Star Wars fan. I'm just a massive Mandalorian fan, right? Mm-hmm. And I have nobody to talk about it with, right? Right now, I don't because my, the my friend who hosts uh, Nerds of the Roundtable, um, he's his little brother's watching it, so he doesn't want to like have anything to do with it. So I'm not even allowed to talk about it on the podcast. Um, so I went to Gabby Ortiz, who's a massive Mandalorian fan. And I was like, can I have someone to talk to about this? And so we low-key just geeked out about the Mandalorian for like at least, it was like 20, 30 minutes. I was like, okay, I got out of my system finally. <laughs> so Everybody at Warriors of Wrestling. I think everyone in the borough of Staten Island loves Star Wars for some reason. I haven't met anybody that's from Staten Island. I'm not from Staten Island, I'm from Brooklyn. But like everybody from Staten Island that I've met through wrestling loves Star Wars. I'm just like, oh, crap. 
is it okay to tell people I like Lord of the Rings? <laughs> uh, yes. but, but but I do like Star Wars as well. But it's like everybody's like a massive, massive. I've Star met Wars. Orlando Bloom. He's an amazing dude. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. He but actually he was like a at one point. Like everybody was in love with him. You if know? you see that movie Elizabeth Town, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he actually he he came to Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Like that's the town, that biggest town next to Baird is Scotts Bluff, and they were there. That's where they filmed the movie. Whenever, um, if you get to, if you go back and watch it, right, um, there's a scene where he throws off his like father's ashes off of this monument, like this big ass rock. That's that's in Scotts Bluff. Like we were there. Like we were there for that scene when he was cutting it. Wow. Yeah. We got to what was the movie? I'm actually gonna look it up. So Elizabeth Town. Elizabeth Town. Oh yeah. yeah no, no, I, I remember that movie. Yeah. I, has, I don't. I didn't. It was on TV. You know, like you know, it's one of those things you kind of just like. Yep. See it. We don't watch the whole thing, but I, I'm going to go look that up. That's really cool. But as much as awesome as this conversation has been, we do have to get to the best part of this segment. So the best thing that happens on the show, it is the 10 count questions, or as I like to call them, the three count, 10 count questions. And here's how it works. We're going to fire off a bunch of questions at you. It's whatever's first thought that comes to your mind. So let's begin. We'll put the imaginary timer on the clock. Bing. And here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Oh, SmackDown. I grew up. I was poor. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite color? Uh, off the top of my head, orange. Three things that you would take to take with you on a deserted island. Uh, can I take a person? Yeah. Uh, take my girlfriend? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a bunch of almonds. Mm, does the island have water? Just whatever you want to bring. If you want to I need water. to survive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Survival is going to be uh, key. A hoodie. Okay. okay. <laughs> Favorite <laughs> movie. I wasn't ready for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie. Oh man. Uh favorite movie. I'm a big movie guy. I love I love movies. Um right now, my favorite movie off the top of my head. Um I'm just gonna say due date with Robert Downey Jr. Okay. And, uh, and Zach Hoffman X. I'm just gonna say that because I can't think of what my actual favorite movie is. I just remember seeing it. Uh, recently and i loved that movie so i was gonna say that that's why i say fancer all right one person that no, you- actually i'm sorry tropic thunder there we go i'm gonna stick with that tropic thunder was gangster too well so. you got two robert down jr movies you can't go I love wrong that guy. That. i love the guy <laughs> <laughs> um one person that you would like to face and oof well i got darius carter I wasn't ready for that to happen um on multiple levels Growing up, I'd always wanted to face The Rock or Shawn Michaels. Um, as time went on, I was like, yo, I just want like a 10-minute match against John Cena on SmackDown. I remember <laughs> thinking that like up until like five, six years ago. Now, somebody I'd like to face, uh, Daniel Bryan. Mm, that's a great pick. He's the man. He's the man. Um, I, when I met him a couple of years ago, I told him to his face. I was like, WrestleMania 40, I'm going to face you. I don't know why I said that, but I was like, I was like you know. But I did the picture. It was right after his father had passed away, he's doing like a meet and greet. I shook his hand and I told him, I'll see you at WrestleMania 40. And he goes, you better work really hard. And I was like, oh, that's such a cool answer. <laughs> hey, he, he's yeah. waiting. Um, all right. Favorite actor? Uh, I could say Robert Downey Jr. Uh, but I am also a really big fan of Ryan Reynolds mm. because I think he's awesome. I think Hugh Jackman's super underrated. Uh, cause he's, a, he's like, he can dance, he can sing, he can act. Um, the rock is just like too big to be an actor, like not physically, but he's just, he's more than an actor to me. Right. Uh, I'm not going to say him. And, but I really, really am a big fan of Christian Bale. Also. He's awesome. I love awesome. Christian Bale. I love Christian Bale for any movie where he has to play two characters. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he has those roles. Oh yeah. Every yeah. Movie. I'm just kind of like the prestige. I'm like, yeah. You're oh my cool. god the prestige is so good dude, dude <laughs> come on you have to say like a, 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 at least for the ending at least for the ending it yeah. Was yeah yeah i just think when i look at it i'm like all right uh batman like wolverine. <laughs> batman uh, wolverine. american psycho i love you in american psycho i oh, love you in the machinist i loved you in um oh geez i'm trying to think uh hard harsh times like i love mm-hmm. you in harsh times i was like the prestige like uh you were one character I was like, I like you as multiple faces. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the movie, but he was technically not one character. That, I know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, but I get what you're saying. But I get what you're saying. Um, all right. So I asked this question, but I'm just very curious. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to change this up. Uh, we're going to go with Marvel versus DC. 
Oh man, you're killing me, dude. I love superheroes. I just I love superheroes. I have a, I have a giant poster of Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. It's just everybody. And then I remember a couple of years ago, I looked at it. I was like, there's no Fantastic Four on here. And I was like, oh, it's because they don't own the rights. And I mean, they own the rights, but they don't want to promote them. Um, if I had to pick, I grew up loving Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man because I grew up on the cartoons. You mm-hmm. know, um, the Batman anime series, which is like still holds up. Superman anime series was great. You know, Michael, um, what was his name? The, uh, the guy that plays Batman's voice. It's not Michael Keane. He played Batman. Uh, Kevin Conley. Ke- yeah, Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Conroy. He's the voice of Batman. He, oh my God, like <sighs> DC has really great stories, but Marvel's so good at intertwining things. It's hard for me to pick. Um, if I had to like, like put a gun to my head or something, I have to pick. I'm going to lean on, I'm going to lean on DC. Uh, I, I like the way they're, I love Marvel. Don't get me wrong. And I don't want to pick, but if I had to, I really enjoy the interconnected stuff of Marvel, but DC has Batman and Superman and anything they do. I love. <laughs> All right. Well, What's your favorite podcast? Well, it's obviously the three count. Everybody knows that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, nominate someone that you want to see on this podcast. Oh, uh, so many names. Um, I'm going to say Darius Carter. Okay. I would love to hear his thoughts on anything because he's a cool dude. And he's also a big Star Wars guy, just in case you want to know. I think I, may, I, think I, heard, I heard him make an Avatar The Last Airbender reference once. And I was like, what do you know, buddy? <laughs> it's like, like i just looked at him i was like what do you know um he's really somebody i would love to hear from uh there's this one guy that i am a big big uh i don't i don't, I don't want to say a, a fan of because he, he is a friend of mine but his name is brother greatness and he's really good at wrestling he's 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 pretty well known on the East Coast, you know. I, I would say um, he's a cruiserweight champion at BWF. His name is Brother Greatness, and if you want to connect with him, I, you know, I'd I'd love to help you out with that. Um, and uh, I would like to see Chris Steeler. Chris Steeler is really cool. He's a fun he's a fun guy to hear talk. So he's okay. also somebody, and he's a, he's the new No Limits champion at Warriors of Wrestling. He's somebody. I don't know if I'm a, I have a certain number of people I can put out there, but those are the three that I'll pick off the top of my head. That's perfect. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show, favorite curse word. Oh, it has to be motherfucker. Hey. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> you said word, right? But like, whatever. It has to be whatever. Go with all of it. Yeah, I'm great with it. <laughs> I, I see motherfucker way too much. I, I need to stop. But I, yeah, that is. If, if you don't mind me asking, just because I got curious, because you said you're going to switch it up. Uh, you said Marvel or DC. What was the original question? Who gave you the best piece of advice? Hmm. Yeah, we kind of touched on that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with uh, I think I'm gonna stick with my answer about the superhero stuff. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Thank well, you. that is the ten count questions, man. So my thing for you now is just let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. On on Instagram, it's Abraham underscore con pro. On Twitter, you can find me at TPC Abraham because that was a nickname I had in high school, and maybe one day I, I'll, I'll lean on I'll I'll, I'll evolve to that so i wanted to keep the uh, the domain name but it's tpc abraham on twitter and it's abraham underscore con pro on uh on instagram all right well that is it so i'm your host clifford red dog miller this is the three count podcast presents now entering ring abraham con and uh you know check out all of our other episodes and you know get ready for the next episode and be there or be somewhere else. Be there or, or shave your ass hair. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast and in there you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh! at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count pod. 
please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please.